Hello again, Norway has many things, but a warm winter climate isn't one of them and I've had to take refuge from the snow falling from the sky. But my Scandinavian tour continues and I've been speaking currencies with another one of the region's top banks, Nordea. Okay, uh, let's start by talking uh, about the Swedish krona. Uh, some of the, the Swedish data that's been coming out recently has been softening. The unemployment picture isn't looking as healthy there as it is here. Does that mean that 2013 might not be so bullish for the Swedish krona? I think you could say that. Um, we have seen quite some depreciation already though, and uh, now I think uh, there is partly at least priced in a lot for the, for the Swedish kroner. There is priced in uh, cuts, uh, at least one, uh, perhaps two. Uh, we believe there will be two. So we believe it will weaken slightly from these levels as well, versus euro for instance, so slightly higher uh, euro stocky, due to just the facts, or ju just the, the things you said. I mean, we, we had extremely strong numbers going through the summer, and then now, during sort of the last couple of months, that has eased off quite a bit. Uh, like you said, both with regards to PMIs, uh, unemployment, uh, risk bank has cut, and uh, yeah, those kinds of things. Yeah. I, I've spoken to lots, lots of analysts in Norway, and they're still very bullish about the economy here. Does that mean that the, the Norwegian crown is just going to carry on going upwards as well? Well, we don't really think so. Um, I, can, I can agree with them that there are sort of arguments for the Noki being strong at this, this point in time. And uh, I think you could say that there are sort of two reasons for it, uh, as with the Swedish kroner, you might say. Uh, at first, there was the sort of the safe haven kind of flows out of euros into stuff like dollars or, or whatever else, uh, due to the sort of the, the euro crisis. Now, we don't really see that anymore. Uh, we don't see um, safe haven kind of flows into dollars for the last sort of half or couple of months. You see quite the opposite, euro dollars has sort of appreciated quite a bit. And, but the fact is that and I don't really think that foreigners are now buying Nokis as a safe haven either. I think they're buying it as a you know, sort of a carry trade. Uh, the interest rates in Norway are based, measured by the two-year swap 1.7% higher than they are in, in Euroland, so there is some carry. And at this point in time, with high liquidity in the world and in low volatilities in the FX markets, we are sort of seeing record low volatilities. So the carrot risk measure in, in Euronoki is, is quite good. There hasn't been this good carrot risk since 2003. Now, where do you go from there? Um, I think that, well, perhaps volatilities could fall even more. I don't really think the interest rate differential will increase that much due to the fact that, I mean, if a Norges Bank chooses now to, to hike rates, then we are most likely seeing an, an even stronger Noki, and they don't really want that. Uh, and we are already missing the inflation target. And what about the situation with the euro dollar? It's been moving around this level 128, 129. Are you surprised of the strength of the euro, considering no fundamental problems have been solved yet? Um, yeah, partly. But I guess, uh, I mean, more or less the whole of the world was uh, short euro dollar going into sort of uh, Draghi saying that we'll do whatever and I mean yes we were surprised <laughs> most of us and then it kind of makes sense to, to get that kind of rebounds uh, we don't really expect the euro to, to go uh, that much stronger or sort of the dollar to weaken that much going further since like you said the, the fundamentals hasn't sort of changed and I mean looking at the fundamental situation in Europe well sure you might have you might have been able to take the crisis out of the euro but you didn't really take the sort of the fundamentally weak eurozone out of the euro. Uh, we're still looking at PMIs uh, sort of corresponding to a, uh, to a um, recession, right? So, I mean, we don't really expect interest rate hikes from, from ECB either. Not that we do from, from Fed either, but I mean, that's the picture. So, so how would you expect the euro dollar to move next year? Do you expect it to weaken further or could it go the opposite way? Yeah, we, we expect lower euro dollar uh, sort of in our long-term forecast. We have a three-month forecast at 1.30, which is basically sideways, I guess, from here. Then further out, we are, we are looking for a downside, uh, mostly due to a stronger dollar, since we think that fundamentally the US is, is far stronger than, than the euro land. And also thinking that when looking at sort of the themes these days, well, fiscal cliff, eurozone, uh, the Middle East, you have tons of sort of huge questions that remains to be solved. And sort of the, 
you can say that the, the different outcomes are quite uh, rivals. I mean, you, you could you could argue for anything really. You could argue for 1.0. You could argue for 1.60, if you feel like it. If the euro if the euro crisis is solved, well, obviously your dollar is going to heaven. Uh, I mean, if if um, if the cooperation breaks down, the eurozone breaks down, then obviously we are at 1.0. Perhaps we know we are at all. But anyway, the market doesn't really believe in those kind of horror stories. So the market thinks that, well, there might be problems, but the politicians and the central banks are so aware that they will solve it in some way. It won't be, it won't be happy ever after, it won't be high growth, but there won't perhaps be a crisis either. That's sort of the feeling, I think. That's all for the moment, but make sure you click back for another instalment of my Scandinavian tour. Goodbye for now.